A few weeks ago, I put out a tweet asking if coaches around Twitter could give three pieces of advice for new offensive coordinators. Today, we're going to be going over some of those answers as well as some of my personal thoughts for any new OC that's starting out. The first piece of advice is going to be figure out your identity. So that's going to be number one, right? Is who are you? That's kind of the basic question that every coach needs to ask themselves is who are you and who do you want to be? So a quote here I love by Bruce Lee is, I fear not the man who has practiced 10,000 kicks once, but I fear the man who has practiced one kick 10,000 times. So that means pretty much don't sell yourself too thin, right? You don't want to try and be good at everything. You don't need to be good at everything. You can really run two to three run schemes and be and have a fluid, consistent run game. You don't want to try and practice 10 different run schemes or 10 different things because you're not going to master one of them. Okay, I'd rather be good at one or two run schemes, know everything about them, get the combos down, make sure that everything within that run scheme is perfect and that I have an answer for every single thing a defense can do within their run scheme. So I always want to make sure don't sell yourself too thin with that. Make sure that you're good at one thing. Don't try and don't try and be good at everything. Who do you want to be? Like I said, do you want to be an outside zone team? Do you want to primarily run wide zone? From there, how can you accomplish what you want to be? By doing that, you want to make sure you're mastering one-on-one -on -one blocks. You're mastering the two-on-two -two combo blocks. Mastering three-on-three -three combo blocks. You're getting the right techniques down. So your main focus is going to be about that scheme and then trying to master the little bits of fundamentals within that scheme. And then when the pressure is on, make sure you're going back to your roots and who you are as an offense, right? When the pressure is on, it's fourth quarter, it's late in the game, don't try and be someone you're not, right? Your kids are always going to go back to their training and back to who they are just because they've done it so many times. Don't ask them to do something new that they're not used to and putting them in that situation. When the pressure is on you, you kind of tend to shrink down a little bit, right? But you want to make sure that you're shrinking down into what you're good at and what you know the best. Next is the old acronym KISS. Keep it simple. And the last S you can make, whatever, keep it simple, stupid, right? But the main thing is just keep it simple, right? Less is more. And you got to remember with these kids, especially if you're coaching middle school kids or even high school kids, they're at school all day, right? They're up from 6 a.m. and then they're getting to practice seven hours later and they play both ways. And you got to keep your install simple because you, there's a lot going on in their minds, right? They're thinking about their history exam. They're thinking about their science exam. They're also thinking about if they're playing defense, if they're playing defense, they're playing special teams. There's a lot going on in their brain. You want to make sure at least offensively, that you're trying to keep it as simple as possible. One word concepts, right? You can tag it if you'd like. If you guys have players that are more one way, then you can get a little bit more complex. But for the most part, just try and keep it as simple as possible. And especially with the, the kid's brain nowadays, right? You see all TikTok and everything too. They have shorter attention spans. So you want to make sure we're getting to the point right away. Make sure they learn what they need to learn. Don't try and drag it on as long as you can. You want to make sure it gets to the point, get in, get out, and do what you need to do. And then make the install fun. Let them come up with the verbiage and let them relate to something they know. If you continue to say, oh, well, this is going to be something that I know from when I was growing up, they're not going to relate to that. Say, hey, I need a hand signal and I need a term for this new pass concept. They're going to have fun with it, right? Have the captains do it. Have the quarterback do it with the wide receivers. Just have those guys work towards something and then they're going to be able to remember it a lot easier because they came up with the name. They came up with the hand signal. So it becomes a little bit easier to learn in that sense. Now fit your scheme to your skill. You want to make sure that you don't force your players into a new system. You want to make your system work around the player's strengths. And a quote is, don't put a square peg into a round hole, right? If you have a lot of speed on the outside, there's no sense in trying to run eye formation and trying to force those guys into running eye formation. If you have speed on the outside, spread everyone out. Use as much space on the field as possible because you have the speed rather than what the defense has, which is a little bit slower. So you have the speed advantage on that side. If you have strength and you don't have as much speed, that's when you can get into more heavy personnel sets and really do some damage within the box. Don't try and spread everyone out because you don't have the speed. The defense is going to be a little bit faster than you, so use your strength to your advantage. If you have smaller linemen, then you can go more wing T based where it's going to be more misdirection and you can really influence the defense just by giving a fake handoff to the fullback running trap. And then you have buck sweep coming around. So different things like that where you can mess with the defender's eyes and that's going to take really take advantage of the small alignment that you have because they'll be able to take advantage of those misalignment with their eyes. They're going to be able to get simple down blocks and then use their speed and space like pulling and quick trap and different things like that within the wing tee. 
And then the bottom one here, if you guys have seen the movie Division 3 with Coach Vice where he takes a pocket passer and he puts him in a triple option offense, right? Don't be that coach, right? Don't try and force your guy who can throw the ball and he can sling the ball just because you don't know much about the pass game. You got to influence yourself. You got to make sure you're educating yourself too to change your game a little bit to fit to your player's strengths, right? So don't be coach vice. Don't take an all league passer and throw him in a, a triple option offense. Make sure you're working towards their strengths. If you are an offensive coordinator or just got promoted to be an offensive coordinator, we are offering an offensive coordinator university course through victorysports.com. And this is going to be taking a deep dive into what it is to be an offensive coordinator, right? It's going to be taught by football coaches with over 20 years of experience between me and my brother, Coach Chris Haddad. And it is going to be going through 10 hours of video content. It's going to be full breakdown on specific schemes, as well as just different ways to break down defenses and different ways to game plan. You're going to be getting principal templates too to help you with your game planning process to make sure you stay organized, as well as offensive blueprints. And you get access to the victory staff, which is me and my brother, Coach Chris. And we're going to be available via email or via DM on Twitter. You're also going to be getting a copy of the 150 drills for coaches and you get a lifetime access to this course. If you guys are interested in checking this course out, I'm going to put the link in the description. Next is trust your assistant coaches, right? And that's a huge thing from, it's going to take so much pressure off you and so much off your plate. You don't try and do everything. It's just a long and exhausting season. You're going to burn out by week three or week four if you're trying to do everything or if you're stressing about every little thing within the offense. You got to delegate some of the stuff to the wide receiver coach, delegate it to the quarterback coach, right? Trust them enough where you can say, hey, I need you to check this out. All right, give me some tips on what this defender is doing in this play. Give them a piece of the game plan, right? I'm going to have you look at coverages, put in all the coverages and huddle for me, and then you can go from there, right? Make sure... But if they're doing it wrong, coach them up on how you want things done. If they're not doing things right, don't scold them. Don't go after them. Just make sure, hey, talk to them. Say, hey, if you try and chew them out or anything like that, they're going to tune you up. right? You don't want to have that relationship with your assistant coaches. You want to make sure that you're coaching them up on how you want things properly, like how you want things done. And you want to make sure that they're you're all on the same page with everything. And then last two, right, they're going to see things that you won't see, right, whether they're up in the box or whether they're on the sideline, they just have a different angle at certain things, right? You want to make sure you're trusting them and you're trusting their experience as well with what information they're giving you. And I've always loved this quote here. It's about the Jimmys and Joes, not the X's and O's. Yes, scheme matters. You got to put your team schematically in a good position to win. But a great coordinator knows how to get their best player of the ball in 10 different ways. You got to make sure that Jimmy's and Joe's are taking care of business as well. So you're getting your best player. If he's a wide receiver, you want to make sure you're putting him in the best spot to get the ball at least 10, 15 times a game. If your best player is a running back, you're handing him the ball and you're basing your offense around your best player. You want to make sure that you're identifying the strength of your offense and then you're building off of that. You want to make sure you figure out ways to get in the ball 10 to 15 times a game. If you have a great wide receiver, you can isolate him. You can put him in the slot, put him in the backfield, line him up on a linebacker. Get him if you normally corners are the best at covering, right? So just leaving him at X and Z is not going to do much for you. Get him in the slot, get him one-on-one on a linebacker, put him in the backfield, put him one-on-one on an interior linebacker. That's going to make your pass game a heck of a lot better just because now you're really isolating him and his skill and you're putting him in the best position to succeed. If you have a great tight end, you can work more play action, more crossing routes, get him going across the field, really making sure that he's selling those big blocks, selling down, and then really working into his route and getting across the field as fast as he can, right? That's where those tight end leak plays end up breaking pretty big, as well as just getting those play action, get those eyes off the tight end for a second, let him work and get let him work into space. And then the last quote is going to be players win games and coaches lose games. I always really thought that, right? If the players are in the right position to win the game, they're going to win the game. If they're not in the right position to win the game, then that's unfortunately on the coaches. So you want to make sure that we're putting the player in the best position to win and you're putting them where they can really show their abilities as best they can. Next is be overly organized. So you always want to make sure you're, you don't want to show up to practice and say, hey, you know what? I forgot to script this. I forgot to do that, right? You always want to make sure that everyone always knows exactly what they're doing. Practice should be as organized as possible. So you want to keep everyone moving. I always like to do five to 10 minute periods. Normally, I don't like to go 15 to 20 minutes because then that just gets a little bit too long and you're starting to drag the period on where kids will get distracted. You want to make sure that everything is going as fast as possible, right? No one's ever really standing around unless they're resting in between drills. We want to make sure that everyone is moving as much as they can. And if you have less coaches, you want to do more group work, right? We came this year for my school. We only had four varsity coaches. 
So we had a wide receiver coach. We had a quarterback coach. I was the tight end running back and also helped with the line. And then we had a line coach, right? So we only had four coaches for an entire varsity and JV program. So we had to make sure we weren't doing as much indie periods, but we also mixed in some more group work. And then we coached those like they were indie periods. So we can get the more technical stuff down during the group periods. But just because you have less coaches doesn't mean that you shouldn't have a slower base practice, right? We can still do a lot of things just with four coaches. And we averaged right around 40 guys per like on our JV and varsity team. So still had a good amount of numbers, but we were still able to keep everyone moving the entire time. And then scripting is going to help you a lot too, because I went through a period where I was trying to read off my call sheet as well as send the plays in. And it was just taking way too long. I was only getting like six reps during a team period. Now I script seven, eight plays. We get those done in about four minutes. Now the twos hop up and we're able to get those same eight plays done. So we can get roughly 16 plays done within a 10 minute period. And that's both ones and twos. So just make sure you're scripting the team periods as well as your inside run periods, as well as your blitz pickup periods. Be organized with your install plans. Be organized with your position coaches' responsibilities, right? You always want to make sure they know exactly what they're supposed to be doing. So they know what they're supposed to be doing in their indie periods. They know what they're supposed to be doing within a group period, a seven on seven period, who they're looking at, what they're looking at, also on their game day responsibilities. Who are they watching, right? Don't let them just watch the game. Have a specific responsibility. Wide receiver coaches watching back seven or the near side corner and outside backer. How are they doing with these two by two coverage? How are they doing with the three by one coverage? Give them specific responsibilities on that day just so you can have more forms of communication on game day. And then also game day communication, right? Who is giving you updates during the game? I was a booth guy at one point before I was a coordinator and I, I coached with my brother. He was always saying, because I would talk to him about some of the defensive stuff. And the worst thing you can have and I was that guy too, is a guy narrating the game. So my brother being my brother, just saying, hey, dude, stop narrating the game. I can see what's going on. So have a guy in the booth that's going to give you quick little snippets. My coach in the booth, Coach Derek right now is awesome. He just gives me what I want to hear. And I'm very like, I need to be in my space. I need to make sure that give me a little bit of information. I'll go and I'll be able to make my calls from that. I don't need a whole ton of information about every single person on the defensive side. Give me just the basics of what's happening. And then I'll be able to move on from there. But you don't want 10 different voices in your own game day. You want to make sure it's simple, easy communication, where you're just getting a lot of simple information and then being able to make your art and your craft work on the sideline. Communicating with your quarterback is one of the biggest tips I could ever give you. And your main thing is you need to build a relationship with him. You need to make sure you know what he's comfortable with in the offense and see what he's uncomfortable with. And if you need to cut it out of the offense, you have to cut it out of the offense, right? I don't care if it's a sexy play you design and you think it looks so great on paper. If he can't complete it and he's not comfortable with it or he's not comfortable with a quarterback run or something along that line, you got to cut it out. Okay, you got to make sure, message him, do whatever you need to do. And while you're watching film, say, hey, what do you think about X, Y, Z on the defense? Okay, then he checks it out. He gives you his player perspective as well as he gives you the perspective of the wide receivers and how everyone's feeling, right? You always know that the wide receivers are going to talk to the quarterbacks outside of practice. So they're going to give you a good vibe of what's going on with the receivers, what the receivers are liking, just the basics within the team and the vibe of the offense where you're not probably seeing it as much, right? So it's going to make sure that you guys are building a good relationship and you want to make sure you're seeing what he's comfortable with, what the receivers are comfortable with, as well as who is uncomfortable with something too. And he should also be involved in the game planning process. So whatever you're thinking of installing that week, I usually will message my quarterback after my coach's meeting and say, hey, we all agreed on this, adding this in. What do you think of this? Okay, I like it. I want to try it. Or no, I'm not really liking that. I'm not comfortable with that. Okay, we'll move on from it. Okay. But he definitely should be involved in the game planning process somehow. And the last one, he needs to know much about you as a play caller and the why behind the play call. So if he sees... You talked all week, hey, we're going to be calling Dagger because this safety is going to fly out with that fade and we're going to have that dig wide open underneath. Okay, then Dagger comes along in the play call in the game. You say, oh, okay, that's the safety he was talking about in game plan. He's going to fly out. I'm going to hit this dig right underneath. So it's the wise behind the play call and really making sure that he understands you just as much as you understand him. And a lot of guys end up forgetting this part here, right? It's still a game. All right, don't let it consume you. It's not your entire life, all right? I know, obviously, college coaches, they're getting paid to do this as their entire life. Yes, that's great. If you're a high school coach, if you're a first-year coordinator going into middle school and high school, it's still a game, right? Keep it as a game. Don't let it consume your entire life. You don't need to spend 12 hours on a Sunday game planning. If you are doing 10 to 12 hours on a Saturday and as well as 10 hours on a Sunday, you're doing way too much. You're doing way too much game planning and you're overthinking a lot of different things. 
you want to make sure you're organizing your game plan, you get a system down where all coaches are involved in the process. And you want to make sure you have time limits as well. If you need to set up a schedule, say, hey, it's from seven to eight, I'm looking at coverages only. So from the last four games, I'm going to sort on defense. I'm going to go all my different coverages. I'm going to look at all my different coverages. Have time limits for that and keep it organized within your game planning process. Just so that you're not just going, okay, one, I don't know how to game plan. Two, I'm just going to watch the defense's film for 10 hours and see if some ideas pop in my head. It's a waste of time. Just be organized with it. It's going to save you so much time. And also use huddle data to your advantage. That's why it's there. And the data entry part is the worst part of football, right? And I know all defensive coaches will tell you that too. But you want to make sure that we're inputting just some basics information about the defense and huddle will give you all the information. If you have common fronts, so put in any type of personnel swap. So if they're adding defensive lineman in, taking a defensive lineman out, or if they're going even or odd front, just label even or odd. It'll tell you the down and distance if you have huddle assist, if you're lucky enough to have huddle assist. It can tell you what down they're going even, what down they're going odd. You want to know their common blitzes. So when are they blitzing and then who is blitzing the most, whether it's a middle backer, where are they blitzing the most, where it's going to be a gap, if it's going to be off the edge. So just knowing those different types of blitzes as well, but just going through and labeling them all is going to be so easy to do and it'll save you so much time. Situational defense. So what are they doing on third down? What are they doing on first down? So if their base defense is first and second down, what are they doing to change on third down? What are they doing to change in the red zone? Right. That was, those are the two main keys that you need to see is what are they doing on third down? What are they doing in the red zone? What is different? And the last one would be coverage breakdown. So just knowing what they, what the defense looks like when they're in man, what their posture is. Are they a yard off playing man coverage, but then they're six yards off in zone coverage. You're going to know the difference just based on their posture, who they're looking at. So if they're staring at the, at the wide receiver, normally it's going to be man coverage. If they're off and tilting in, it's most likely going to be zone coverage. And like I said, it's a game, right? Don't let it consume you. If it's miserable for you, it's going to be miserable for the players. Try and keep it fun. Remember, it's still a game. Of course, unfortunately, stuff happens in the game that we can't control. But make sure you're trying to control what you can control and just keep it as fun. And remember, it's still a game. Have some fun with it. Find what you do well and have answers off of that. So that comes back to what I was talking about with the identity earlier. You want to have at least two to three solid run schemes. Off of that, you want to have a play action protection off those run schemes just to be able to sell those certain run schemes that you're so good at. Have an answer for what you think the defense will do to stop you. So if you think, all right, they're going to start sealing the edge pretty hard on wide zone. Okay, now I'm going to add an H back on the edge and we're going to cut that right back up inside. Off of that, we're going to have play action with that H back and then we're going to leak him back on the backside flat. Different things like that where it's going to have an answer to what the defense is trying to do to stop you. And then have as many formations as they can handle, right? You want to make sure that the offense is getting the formations down. And there's a quote I love. Someone tweeted this back and they said, formations are cheap and plays are expensive. And that's awesome to say, right? Plays are expensive. They're a lot of time. It's a lot of grueling work to get a play down. A formation, you can line a guy up in the backfield behind the guard and then move him to a wing alignment. And it's a whole different thing for a defense. And even so, just a quick little trade in a formation can get them going from three by one to two by two. And now you're setting yourself up for success just based on the formation. And in all caps here, I have, you won't have an answer for everything, right? Unfortunately, the defense is going to do certain things that is going to disrupt your identity in your main bread and butter play. From there, you want to make sure that problem that say you end up losing the game, right? Don't just shut the door on your identity. There's a ton of coaches that have probably had the same problem that you have, and it's a lot simpler fix than you think. Reach out to coaches on Twitter, reach out to local coaches or someone that you actually learned that scheme from and see if they have the answer for it, right? Don't just shut the door and say, hey, we can't run it anymore. We're not good at it, this and that, right? It's a simple fix. A lot of stuff with football is going to be a very simple fix. And there's a coach somewhere that has had that same problem. So just reach out and see if anyone has that answer for you. And the last part here is always keep learning, right? You do not know everything and you will never know everything. That's the beauty of football is that there's always so much to learn. You always think right now I'm an OC. I know so much about football and I'm here to tell you, I've been an OC now for going on four years now, going on my fifth year. And I feel like I know nothing, right? I'm still learning stuff every single day. I know a good amount about football, but you will never, ever know everything. And that's the beauty of it. You can continue to grow, continue to learn so much about this awesome game. There's always something from another coach out there that will help your team. And the thing with growing as a coach, right, you expect your players to train, to lift weights and run. And you got to think now they should be expecting this of you. You should be looking to grow, educate yourself and put them in the best position to succeed so that you're not running the same thing and putting them in a tough situation to, to have success. Keep growing, learn different things, right? Grow and expand like 
some of these different colleges, if they're going to be looking to play college ball, don't be so confined with what you know. Explore, see what these other college coaches know and see what you can simplify down to the high school level. So then when they get to the college level and now they're running some of the stuff that they're already running up there. So make sure you're just continuing to grow and always keep learning. And a couple pieces of advice to end with, right? So remember, if you're going to listen to the people in the stands, you might as well go sit with them. That's always a quote I've always loved because you're always going to have fans chirping. You're always going to have fans saying certain things about the offense, this and that. Don't listen to them, right? Ignore them. And then a quote off of that I always love is don't take criticism from someone you wouldn't take advice from. So if they're not helping you and you wouldn't take advice from as a coordinator, as a coach, as a leader, then don't take criticism from them. All right. Just block out the noise. That's the tough part about this position, right? You have all the eyes on you. All the eyes are depending on you for your offense to succeed. But now at that point, you just got to block out the noise. All right. Continue work for next week and just continue to grow. And believe in yourself, right? You're in this position for a reason and someone believed that you can do it. So you're not getting this job just because they're throwing you in there and saying, hey, good luck. You're in this job for a reason. Someone believed and said, hey, I think you can manage this offense and you can coordinate this offense. So making sure now you're believing in yourself and someone had that belief in you to take care of this position. So now you got to have that belief in yourself. And lastly, it's just to make sure you keep your ego to the side and you keep your players first. Everyone always goes to clinics every single offseason and wants to really enhance their offense and do all these cool things that these new offensive coordinators are coming up with. Unfortunately, some of them you can't do, right? That just is what it is. You want to make sure that you're not just throwing plays out there that just look sexy and you want to make your offense look crazy, right? The eyes are on you, but you've got to make sure that you're putting the players first. Players should always come first within the team, within the offense, and just make sure that they're getting taken care of so that they're putting in themselves for the best position for success.